Hello guys, I am here to talk to you about um, how you can improve your chances when you take TOI and other standardized tests. Um, I'm going to give you pointers, I'm going to give you ideas. I hope they work for you. Uh, even though I'm going to talk basically about TOI, uh, most of what I am going to tell you also applies for TOEFL or Cambridge uh, English tests, right? Now, um, when we talk about, um, give me a second, here we go. When we talk about uh, TOEFL or TOEIC, we need to consider that uh, we have a challenge. We have a challenge in our hands and not everybody deals the same way with stress. So some people have a lot riding on the results of these tests. Uh, some people depend on the test, on the results of the test to get a job or to get a promotion. Uh, some other people depend on the test to go to study overseas. And some other people have to take the test as a graduation requirement. So all of this normally and naturally puts some stress on you, it's going to happen, right? So what we need to aim to do is to learn to control these, these nerves. Now, uh, we need to take into consideration that there are actually two factors that are going to affect our performance when we take standardized tests. And one is your English proficiency and the other one is your mindset. And uh, there are different things that we can do to improve both. Now, uh, unfortunately, some people's English, and I'm speaking in general, uh, is not up to par to obtain a specific results. Uh, for example, it would be a little illogical for me to ask uh, somebody who has been studying English for six months especially in, in countries where we work English as as EFL, right? Uh, it would be a little foolish of me to expect that a person who has studied English for six months or even a year to ask them to go and, and get 500 points in TOEIC. And uh, that would be a little foolish on my part because you need to develop the skills. So, if your English does not allow you to communicate effectively, and most likely you're not going to get a score of 80 points in TOEFL IBT or 600 points in TOEIC. So, what should we do if our English is not good enough? If that's the case, I advise taking English classes. I don't mean preparation courses for standardized tests. Not at this point anyway, not at that moment. If, if somebody's English is not good enough, I would advise that you go and take English classes, that you learn more English, that you perfect your English. Uh, there are different places where you can go and take uh, classes. There are colleges, there are, there are private institutions that offer English classes. There are even uh, private tutors who are actually really good and they might help you to to get the desired scores wherever you go one point is important you need to do your research and you need to choose a reputable institution and do the work don't fall for those uh, empty promises uh, some people promise things that they cannot deliver right some people tell you, ah, in six months you will be speaking English as uh, as a native. Uh, I don't think that's true. I mean, there might be cases that some people may do that, but uh, it's not the most common thing to happen. Um, regarding your mindset, uh, there are people whose English profi proficiency excels in everyday situations and, and they communicate effectively. In other words, there are some people 
people's English is actually very, very good. But when they take a standardized test, they crumble, meaning they lose control and they don't do very well. So uh, I have uh, some slides that are going to help you to understand uh, some things you can do in order to improve uh, your mindset regarding uh, tests. First of all, you need to believe in yourself, okay? If you know that your English is good enough, then you gotta trust in yourselves. Well, I know that sometimes we have doubts in our skills, it happens to all of us, but we need to remember that this is the pinnacle where you will show everything you have learned in your English studies, specifically in your licenciatura, right? Or in your English program, whatever you have been studying English, um, this is where you show what you can do, right? So believe in yourself, believe that if you have gotten to this point, there's a reason why you have done it, yes? That's very important to keep in mind. It's important that you know the test, yes? Now, yes, having uh, good English is very important, but in order to improve your chances of success, you need to know the test you are taking. Now, if to excel in these tests, many people take preparation courses, okay? You need to be familiar with the test, that's a fact. So I, uh, the, sh the pointers I'm going to share with you might allow you to gain more confidence when you are taking them. Uh, because the video is oriented towards English majors at UNICAES, uh, I will focus on TOEIC, of course. But I repeat, uh, many of the pieces of advice that I give are uh, extrapolated, are easily applied also to, to TOEFL or CAE or CPE. TOEIC, the paper-based version, which is applied here in the country, it takes approximately two hours. But taking into account that you need to fill in personal information and you need to follow uh, ident an identification confirmation process, it might take up to three hours to get through the test. Now, this is very important. Remember that you need to take your identification with you what we call in our country, uh, your DUI. You need to take your DUI with you, and uh, if you don't take it with you, they might not allow you to do the test. In our country, as of last year, in 2019, there's, uh, the new version is being applied in the country, in most institutions. So. Uh, there are some differences uh, between the previous version of TOEIC and the current version. Not in length though, not in the number of items. Uh, the test still consists of two sections. There's the listening section and there's the reading section. And both sections still have 100 items. There will be 200 difficulties you need to solve when you take the test. Uh, the sections are basically the same. There are still seven sections. In section one, the photos, so that's for the listening section, right? The photos, then the question response section. Remember in this section, uh, you don't have anything written on, on, the, on the material. You only need to listen to some uh, interactions and you need to choose the correct response. Uh, either A, B, or C, right? In the third section, you will find uh, conversations. There will be 13 conversations, and for every conversation, there are three questions. And then in section four, there will be 10 talks. Uh, they are um, a bit more complex, and there are three questions per talk. That's regarding the listening section. In the reading section, you will find the same three sections that is uh, an incomplete sentences section there will be 30 questions 
this is grammar, right? This is grammar. And then uh, question six, you need to complete some sentences and uh, there will be vocabulary issues here. And there will also be some grammatical difficulties as well. Now, section seven is still reading comprehension. That's, properly speaking, that's the reading comprehension section. And uh, we can sort of divide it into, there are single passages, that is to say only one reading material, and there will be 29 questions, and you will find 10 reading texts. There will be from two to four questions in each reading <clears throat> material. And then in section seven, you will find multiple passages. That is to say, you will find uh, not one reading material, but two or even three reading materials. And uh, there will be 25 sets of double or triple passages, and there will be five questions per each set. Now, what is the difference between the previous version of TOEIC and this current version that I am talking to you about? Well, there are three main differences to my, to my opinion. Uh, there are fewer photos, definitely. Uh, remember, there used to be like 10 photographs in the practices. Uh, in, in the previous tests, uh, toy tests, I mean, there are 10 photos, and now in the new version, there are fewer photos. There are like six photos. In part three and four, I am talking about the listening section, of course, uh, there are two integrated questions at least. In other words, there will be a couple of questions in which, yes, you are listening to something, but also you will need to read something, okay? To, in order to answer an item, you need to listen to this, but you also need to read this, and you need to, to integrate both pieces of information in order to get the correct answer. And then uh, in the reading comprehension section in part seven, the difference that I found is that there are some reading sections that require you to read three different reading materials. In the previous format of the test only had two different pieces of reading material for some questions. Now that has changed, that provides <clears throat> an extra challenge, of course. And uh, I am going to continue talking to you about uh, more issues about uh, this test in the next uh, video. Ah, not without telling you also that there might also be a small difference in the in section six in the test. There might be uh, a question in which you need to place a sentence in a specific paragraph. That is also new in TOI, but, but it's a minor difference. Uh, we have done this in TOEFL practice. Uh, so I'm going to stop here and we'll continue on the next video, guys.